Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya or Sri Vaishnavism is a denomination within the Vaishnavism tradition of Hinduism. The name is derived from Sri referring to goddess Lakshmi as well as a prefix that means sacred, revered, and god Vishnu who are together revered in this tradition. The tradition traces its roots to the ancient Vedas and Pankaratra texts and popularized by the Alvars with their Divya Prabandams. The founder of Sri Vaishnavism is traditionally attributed as Nathamuni of the 10th century CE. Its central philosopher has been Ramanuja of the 11th century who developed the Vishishtadvaita, qualified non-dualism, Vedanta sub-school of Hindu philosophy. Tradition is based on the Vishishtadvaita Vedanta philosophy derived from Vedas and Divya Prabandhams. The tradition split into two sub-traditions around the 16th century called the Vadakalai sect giving Veda the first preference and Thankalai sect giving Divya Prabandham the first preference. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The name Srivaishnavism IAST, is derived from two words, Shri and Vaishnavism. In Sanskrit the word Shri refers to goddess Lakshmi as well as a prefix that means, sacred, revered, and god Vishnu who are together revered in this tradition. The word Vaishnavism refers to a tradition that reveres god Vishnu as the supreme god. The followers of Srivaishnavism are known as Srivaishnava IAST, Srivaisnava. Topic. History Topic. Mythological origins The tradition traces its roots to the primordial start of the world through Vishnu, and to the texts of Vedic era with both Sri and Vishnu found in ancient texts of the first millennium BCE particularly to the Puranas, Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita. Topic. Historical origins The historical basis of Sri Vaishnavism is in the syncretism of two developments. The first is Sanskrit traditions found in ancient texts such as the Vedas and the Agama and the second is the Tamil traditions found in early medieval texts Tamil Prabandham and practices such as the emotional songs and music of Alvars that expressed spiritual ideas, ethics and loving devotion to God Vishnu. The Sanskrit traditions likely represent the ideas shared in ancient times, from Ganga river plains of the northern Indian subcontinent, while the Tamil traditions likely have roots in the Kaveri river plains of southern India, particularly what in modern times are the coastal Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu region. The tradition was founded by Nathamuni 10th century, who combined the two traditions, by drawing on Sanskrit philosophical tradition and combining it with the aesthetic and emotional appeal of the Bhakti movement pioneers called the Alvars. Sri Vaishnavism developed in Tamil Nadu in the 10th century, after Nathamuni returned from a pilgrimage to Vrindavan in North India modern Uttar Pradesh. Nathamuni's ideas were continued by Yamunacharya, who maintained that the Vedas and Pankaratras are equal, devotional rituals and bhakti are important practices. The legacy of Yamunacharya was continued by Ramanuja 1017 but they never met. Ramanuja, a scholar who studied in an Advaita Vedanta monastery and disagreed with some of the ideas of Advaita, became the most influential leader of Sri Vaishnavism. He developed the Visistadvaita qualified non-dualism philosophy. Around the 18th century, the Sri Vaishnava tradition split into the Vatakalai (Northern Culture), Vedic, and Tenkalai (Southern Culture), Bhakti. The Vatakalai placed more emphasis on the Sanskrit traditions, while the Tenkalai relied more on the Tamil traditions. This theological dispute between the Vedic and Bhakti traditions traces its roots to the debate between Sarangam and Kanchipuram monasteries between the 13th and 15th century. The debate then was on the nature of salvation and the role of grace. The Bhakti favoring Tenkalai tradition asserted, states Patricia Mum, that Vishnu saves the soul like a mother cat carries her kitten where the kitten just accepts the mother while she picks her up and carries. In contrast the Vedic favoring Vatakalai tradition asserted that Vishnu saves the soul like a mother monkey carries her baby, where the baby has to make an effort and hold on while the mother carries. This metaphorical description of the disagreement between the two sub-traditions, first appears in the 18th century Tamil texts, but historically refers to the foundational ideas behind the karma marga versus bhakti marga traditions of Hinduism. Topic. Reverence for the goddess and god 
Along with Vishnu, and like Shaivism, the ultimate reality and truth is considered in Sri Vaishnavism to be the divine sharing of the feminine and the masculine, the goddess and the god. Sri Lakshmi is regarded as the preceptor of the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya. Goddess Sri has been considered inseparable from God Vishnu, and essential to each other, and to the act of mutual loving devotion. Sri and Vishnu act and cooperate in the creation of everything that exists, and redemption. According to some medieval scholars of Srivashnava theology, states John Carmen, Sri and Vishnu do so using divine knowledge that is unsurpassed, and through love that is an erotic union. But Sri Vaishnavism differs from Shaivism, in that Vishnu is ultimately the sole creator, preserver and destroyer of the universe while Sri Lakshmi is the medium for salvation, the kind mother who recommends to Vishnu and thereby helps living beings in their desire for redemption and salvation. In contrast, in Shaivism, the goddess Shakti is the energy and power of Shiva and she is the equal with different roles, supreme in the role of creator and destroyer. The prefix Shri is used for this sect because they give special importance to the worship of the goddess Lakshmi, the consort of Vishnu, who they believe to act as a mediator between god Vishnu and man. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Philosophy. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Vishishtadvaita. Sri Vaishnavism's philosophical foundation was established by Ramanuja, who started his Vedic studies with Yadava Prakasha in an Advaita Vedanta monastery. He brought Upanishadic ideas to this tradition, and wrote texts on qualified monism, called Vishishtadvaita in the Hindu tradition. His ideas are one of three subschools in Vedanta, the other two are known as Adi Shankara's Advaita absolute monism and Madhvacharya's Dvaita dualism. Ramanuja's Vishishtadvaita asserts that Atman souls and Brahman are different, a difference that is never transcended. God Vishnu alone is independent, all other gods and beings are dependent on him. However, in contrast to Dvaita Vedanta philosophy of Madhvacharya, Ramanuja asserts qualified non-dualism that souls share the same essential nature of Brahman, and that there is a universal sameness in the quality and degree of bliss possible for human souls, and every soul can reach the bliss state of God himself. While the 13th to 14th century Madhvacharya asserted both qualitative and quantitative pluralism of souls, Ramanuja asserted qualitative monism and quantitative pluralism of souls, states Sharma. The other philosophical difference between Madhvacharya's Vaishnavism Sampradaya and Ramanuja's Vaishnavism Sampradaya, has been on the idea of eternal damnation. Madhvacharya believed that some souls are eternally doomed and damned, while Ramanuja disagreed and accepted the Advaita Vedanta view that everyone can, with effort, achieve inner liberation and spiritual freedom moksha. According to Sri Vaishnavism theology, moksha can be reached by devotion and service to the Lord and detachment from the world. When moksha is reached, the cycle of reincarnation is broken and the soul is united with Vishnu, though maintaining their distinctions, in Vaikuntha, Vishnu's heaven. Moksha can also be reached by total surrender and saranagati, an act of grace by the Lord, God, according to Ramanuja's Sri Vaishnavism philosophy, has both soul and body, all of life and the world of matter is the glory of God's body. The path to Brahman Vishnu, asserted Ramanuja, is devotion to godliness and constant remembrance of the beauty and love of personal God Saguna Brahman, Vishnu, one which ultimately leads one to the oneness with Nirguna Brahman. Topic. Comparisons with Advaita Vedanta Ramanuja accepted that the Vedas are a reliable source of knowledge, then critiqued other schools of Hindu philosophy, including Advaita Vedanta, as having failed in interpreting all of the Vedic texts. He asserted, in his Sri Bhasya, that Purvapaksin previous schools selectively interpret those Upanishadic passages that support their monistic interpretation, and ignore those passages that support the pluralism interpretation. There is no reason, stated Ramanuja, to prefer one part of a scripture and not other, the whole of the scripture must be considered on par. One cannot, according to Ramanuja, attempt to give interpretations of isolated portions of any scripture. Rather, the scripture must be considered one integrated corpus, expressing a consistent doctrine. The Vedic literature, asserted Ramanuja, mention both plurality and oneness, therefore the truth must incorporate pluralism and monism, or qualified monism. This method of scripture interpretation distinguishes Ramanuja from Adi Shankara. 
Shankara's exegetical approach Samanvaya Tatparya Linga with Invaya Vyatirika, states that for proper understanding all texts must be examined in their entirety and then their intent established by six characteristics, which includes studying what is stated by the author to be his goal, what he repeats in his explanation, then what he states as conclusion and whether it can be epistemically verified. Not everything in any text, states Shankara, has equal weight and some ideas are the essence of any expert's textual testimony. This philosophical difference in scriptural studies, helped Shankara conclude that the principal Upanishads primarily teach monism with teachings such as Tat Tvam Asi, while helping Ramanuja conclude that qualified monism is at the foundation of Hindu spirituality. Topic. Comparisons with Protestant Christianity and Buddhism John Carmen, a professor at the Harvard Divinity School, states that some of the similarities in salvation ideas in Sri Vaishnavism and Protestant Christian doctrines of divine grace are striking. Both accept God as a personal concept, accept devotees' ability to relate to this God without human intermediaries, and accept the idea of sola gratia, salvation through faith by the grace of God alone, such as those found in Martin Luther's teachings. While both Sri Vaishnavism and Protestant Christianity accept a supreme God and shares ideas on the nature of salvation, they differ in their specifics about incarnation such as Jesus Christ being the only incarnation in Christianity, while Sri Vaishnavism accepts many incarnations avatar of Vishnu. Christian missionaries in 19th-century colonial British India, noted the many similarities and attempted to express the theology of Christianity as a bhakti marga to Hindus, along the lines of Sri Vaishnavism, in their mission to convert them from Hinduism to Christianity. Similar teachings on the nature of salvation through grace and compassion, adds Karman, are found in the Japanese scholar Shinran's text on Jodo Shinshu sect of Buddhism, even though non-theistic Buddhism and theistic Sri Vaishnavism do differ in their views on God. Topic. Texts and scholarship Sri Vaishnavism philosophy is primarily based on interpreting Vedanta, particularly the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita, the Brahma Sutras and the Narayaniya section of the Mahabharata. The Vaishnava Agama texts, also called the Pankaratra, has been an important part of Sri Vaishnava tradition. Another theological textual foundation of the tradition are the Tamil Bhakti songs of the Alvars 7th to 10th century. The syncretic fusion of the two textual traditions is sometimes referred to as the Ubhaya Vedanta, or dual Vedanta. The relative emphasis between the two has been a historic debate within the Sri Vaishnavism tradition, which ultimately led to the schism into the Vatikalai and Tenkalai sub-traditions around the 18th century. Nathamuni Nathamuni collected the poems of Namalvar, in the form of Divya Prabandham, likely in the 9th century CE, or the 10th century. One of his lasting contributions was to apply the Vedic theory of music on all the Alvar songs using Sanskrit prosody, calling the resulting choreography as divine music, and teaching his nephews the art of resonant bhakti singing of the Alvar songs. This precedence set the Guru Sisya Parampara teacher -student tradition in Sri Vaishnavism. This style of education from one generation to the next, is a tradition called Arayars, states Guy Beck, which preserved the art of singing and dancing the verses of the Divya Prabandham. Set in the sacred melodies and rhythms described in the Vedic texts, Nathamuni's efforts to syncretically combine the Vedic knowledge and Alvar compositions, also set the precedence of reverence for both the Vedas and the Alvar Bhakti ideas. Nathamuni's scholarship that set Alvar songs in Vedic meter set a historic momentum, and the liturgical and meditational songs continue to be sung in the modern era temples of Sri Vaishnavism, which is part of the service called Cevai Sanskrit, Siva. Nathamuni is also attributed with three texts, all in Sanskrit. These are Naya Tattva, Purusha Nirnaya and Yogarahasya. The Yogarahasya text, states Govindacharya, is a meditational text, includes the eight-limb yoga similar to that of Patanjali, but emphasizes yoga as the art of communion with God. The Naya Tattva text survives only in quotes and references cited in other texts, and these suggest that it presented epistemic foundations naya, including the philosophical basis for the Hindu belief on the existence of soul. Atman, in contrast to Indian philosophies such as Buddhism that denied the existence of soul. Nathamuni, for example asserts, If I 
did not refer to the true self, there would be no interiority belonging to the soul. The interior is distinguished from the exterior by the concept, I. The aspiration, may I, having abandoned all suffering, participate freely in infinite bliss, actuates a person whose goal is liberation to study scriptures etc. Were it thought that liberation involved the destruction of the individual, he would run away as soon as the subject of liberation was suggested. The I, the knowing subject, is the inner self. Nyatattva, Nathamuni, tilde 9th-10th century, translator, Christopher Bartley Topic. Yamunacharya Yamunacharya was the grandson of Nathamuni, also known in Sri Vaishnava tradition as Alavandar, whose scholarship is remembered for correlating Ulvar Bhakti theology and Pankaratra Agama texts to Vedic ideas. He was the Acharya chief teacher of Sri Vaishnavism monastery at Sarangam, and was followed by Ramanuja, even though they never met. Yamunacharya composed a number of works important in Sri Vaishnavism, particularly Siddhatrayam about the nature of Atman, God, Universe, Gitarthasangraha analysis of the Bhagavad Gita, Agamapramanya epistemological basis of Agamas, mapping them to the Vedas, Maha Purushanarnayam extension of Nathamuni's treatise, Stotaratnam and Chathusloki Bhakti Strota texts. Yamunacharya is also credited with Nitya Grantha and Mayavada Kandana. The Nitya Grantha is a ritual text and suggests methods of daily worship of Narayana Vishnu. The 10th century Mayavada Kandana text, together with Siddhatrayam of Yamunacharya predominantly critiques the philosophy of the traditionally dominant school of Advaita Vedanta in Hindu philosophy, but also critiques non-Vedic traditions. <laughs> Ramanuja The Sri Vaisnava tradition attributes nine Sanskrit texts to Ramanuja, Vedarthasangraha literally, summary of the Veda's meaning, Sri Bhasya a review and commentary on the Brahma Sutras, Bhagavad Gita Bhashya a review and commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, and the minor works titled Vedantadipa, Vedantasara, Gadhyatreya which is a compilation of three texts called the Saranagati Gadhyam, Saranga Gadhyam and the Vaikunta Gadhyam, and Nitya Grantham. Some modern scholars have questioned the authenticity of all but the three of the largest works credited to Ramanuja. The following texts are considered as authentically traceable to Ramanuja Sri Bhashya, Vedarthasangraha, and the Bhagavad Gita Bhashya. Ramanuja's scholarship is predominantly founded on Vedanta, Upanishads in particular. He never claims that his ideas were original, but his method of synthesis that combined the Vedic ideas with popular spirituality, states Ann Overzi, is original. Ramanuja, wrote his biographer Ramakrishnananda, was the culmination of the movement started from the Vedas, nourished by the Alvars, Nathamuni and Yamuncharya. Ramanuja himself credits the theories he presents, in Vedarthasangraha, to the ideas of ancient Hindu scholars such as Bodhyana, Tonka, Brahmanandan, Dramita, Dravidakarya, Guadeva, Kapardin, and Baruchi. The 11th century scholarship of Ramanuja emphasized the concept of sarira sararan, that is the world of matter and the empirical reality of living beings as the body of Brahman. Everything observed is God, one lives in this body of God, and the purpose of this body and all of creation is to empower soul in its journey to liberating salvation. <laughs> Post-Ramanuja period authors After Ramanuja several authors composed important theological and exegetical works on Sri Vaishnavism. Such authors include Parsara Bhadar, Natadora Mal, Engel Aswan, Sudarshan Suri, Pillai Lokacharya, Vedanta Desika, Manavala Mamanagal, Vidaku Thiruvidi Pillai also called Krishnapada Swami, Pariyavachan Pillai, Nayanarachan Pillai, Azagiya Manavala Purumal Nayanar, Rangaramanuja Muni. Topic. Organization The Sri Vaishnavism tradition has nurtured an institutional organization of Matha's monasteries since its earliest days, particularly from the time of Ramanuja. After the death of Yamunacharya, Ramanuja was nominated as the leader of the Sarangam Matha, though Yamunacharya and Ramanuja never met. Amongst other things, Ramanuja is remembered in the Sri Vaishnavism tradition for his organizational skills and the lasting institutional reforms he introduced at Sarangam, a system paralleling those at Advaita monasteries of his time and where he studied before joining Sarangam Matha. 
Ramanuja travelled and founded many Sri Vaishnavism mathas across India, such as the one in Melukot. The Sri Vaishnavism tradition believes that Ramanuja started 700 mathas, but historical evidence suggests several of these were started later. The matha, or a monastery, hosted numerous students, many teachers and an institutionalized structure to help sustain and maintain its daily operations. A matha in Vaishvaism and other Hindu traditions, like a college, designates teaching, administrative and community interaction functions, with prefix or suffix to names, with titles such as guru, acharya, swami and jiyar. A guru is someone who is a teacher, guide or master of certain knowledge. Traditionally a reverential figure to the student in Hinduism, the guru serves as a counselor, who helps mold values, shares experiential knowledge as much as literal knowledge, an exemplar in life, an inspirational source and who helps in the spiritual evolution of a student." An acharya refers to either a guru of high rank, or more often to the leader of a regional monastery. This position typically involves a ceremonial initiation called diksha by the monastery, where the earlier leader anoints the successor as acharya. A Swami is usually those who interact with community on the behalf of the Matha. The chief and most revered of all Vaishnava monasteries, are titled as Jir, Jiyar, Jiyar, or Siyar. The Sri Vaishnavism Mathas over time, subdivided into two, those with Tenkalai southern tradition and Vadakalai northern tradition of Sri Vaishnavism. The Tenkalai associated Mathas are headquartered at Sarangam, while Vadakalai Mathas are associated with Kanchipuram. Both these traditions have from 10th century onwards considered the function of mathas to include feeding the poor and devotees who visit, hosting marriages and community festivals, farming temple lands and flower gardens as a source for food and worship ingredients, being open to pilgrims as rest houses, and this philanthropic role of these Hindu monasteries continues. In the 15th century, these monasteries expanded by establishing Ramanuja Kuta in major South Indian Sri Vaishnavism locations. The organizationally important Sri Vaishnavism Matha are Tenkalai tradition Sarangam Vanamamalai Tarukorangudi Vadakalai tradition Parakala Ahobila Andavan Tenkalai and Vadakalai sub-traditions The Sri Vaishnava tradition has two major sub-traditions, called the Vadakalai northern, and Thankalai southern. The term northern and southern sub-traditions of Sri Vaishnavism refers respectively to Kanchipuram the northern part of Tamil country and Sarangam the southern part of Tamil country and Kaveri River Delta area where Ramanuja wrote his Vedanta treatises from. These sub-traditions arose as a result of philosophical and traditional differences in the post-Ramanuja period. The Vadakalai relied stronger on the Sanskrit texts such as Vedas and Pankaratras tantric, while the Tenkalai emphasized Bhakti texts such as the Prabandas of Alvars. From the early days, the Sri Vaishnavism movement grew with its social inclusiveness, where emotional devotionalism to personal god Vishnu was open without limitation to gender or caste, a tradition led by Alvars in the 7th to 8th century. Ramanuja philosophy negated caste, states Ramaswamy. Ramanuja, who led from the Sarangam temple welcomed outcasts into temples and gave them important roles in temple operations, with medieval temple records and inscriptions suggesting that the payments and offerings collected by the temple were shared regardless of caste distinctions. Scholars offer divergent views on the relative approach of the two sub-traditions on caste and gender. Raman states that Tenkalai did not recognize caste barriers and were more liberal in assimilating people from all castes, possibly because this had been the tradition at Sarangam from the earliest days of Sri Vaishnavism. In contrast, Satarangani states that it was Vadakalai who were more liberal and who did not recognize caste barriers, possibly because they were competing with the egalitarian Veera Shaiva Hindus Lingayatism of Karnataka. The Thankalai tradition brought into their fold artisanal castes shudras into community based devotional movements, and writes Raman, It can almost be said that the Thankalai represented the anti caste tendencies while the Vadakalai school championed the cause of purity of the Vedic tenets. The Tenkalai held, adds Raman, that anyone can be a spiritual teacher regardless of caste. The Vadakalai tradition, states Satarangani in contrast to Raman's views, were the liberal cousin of Tenkalai and therefore more successful in gaining devotees, while in southern Tamil lands Shaivism prospered possibly because of Tenkalai school of Vaishnavism being narrow and orthodox in approach. 
The Vadakalai school not only succeeded in northern Tamil lands, she adds, but spread widely as it inspired the egalitarian Bhakti movement in north, west and east India bringing in Bhakti poet saints from "...entire cross-section of class, caste and society". Thankalai sect Southern Manavala Mamanagal Characteristics The Thankalai place a higher importance to Tamil slokas than Sanskrit, and lay more emphasis on worship of Vishnu. The Thankalai accept prapati as the only means to attain salvation. They consider prapati as an unconditional surrender. The Thankalai follow the Tamil prabandam, and assert primacy to rituals in Tamil language. They regard kaivalya detachment, isolation, as an eternal position within the realm of Vaikuntha Vishnu's eternal abode or heaven, though it only exists at the outer most regions of Vaikuntha. They further say that God's seemingly contradictory nature is both minuscule and immense are examples of God's special powers that enable him to accomplish the impossible. According to Thankalay, exalted persons need not perform duties such as Sandhyavanandam, they do so only to set a good example. They don't ring bells during worship. Thankalay forbid widows to shave tonsure their head, quoting the Parasara Smriti, while Vadakalay support the tonsure quoting the Manumriti. Topic. Demographics The Thankalai trace their lineage to Mudaliandan, nephew of Ramanuja. The Thankalai are followers of philosophy of Pillai Lokacharya and Manavala Mamuni, who is considered to be the reincarnation of Ramanuja by the Thankalai. Topic. Notable Thankalai people Srinivasa Ramanujan (1887–1920), the Indian mathematician. K. S. Krishnan (1898–1961), the Indian physicist. B. K. S. Iyengar (1918–2014), founder of style of yoga, Iyengar Yoga. Alasinga Perumal, disciple of Swami Vivekananda and one of the founder of Brahmavedan, which later became Vedanta Kesari. Sujatha Rangarajan, writer, editor and engineer, key person behind development of electronic voting machine for which he was awarded Vasvik Aryakudi Ramanuja Iyengar, renowned musician and architect of modern Carnatic music Charu Hasan Tamil actor, director, laywer Mani Ratnam, Tamil film director Vadakalai, Northern, Vedanta Desika Topic. Characteristics The Vadakalai are followers of Ramanuja and Vedanta Desika, who founded the Vadakalai Sampradaya based on the Sanskritic tradition. They lay more emphasis on the role of Lakshmi i.e. Shri, and uphold Sanskrit Vedas as the ultimate pramanam, or authority, although Ubhaya Vedanta is used to infer from and establish the doctrine of Vishishtaadvaita. The Vadakalai infer that all of the Alwar's compositions are derived from Vedas, and one would always have go to the ultimate source to reference and defend the doctrine. Vadakalai lay emphasis on Vedic norms as established by rishis and all preceptors. The Vadakalai ardently follows the Sanskrit Vedas, and the set of rules prescribed by the Manumriti and Dharma Shastras. The sect is based on the Sankritic tradition, and the set of rules prescribed by the Manumriti and other Dharma Shastras. In Sanskrit the Vadakalai are referred to as Atara Kalarya. Traditionally, the Vadakalai believe in practicing Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga and Bhakti Yoga, along with Prapati, as means to attain salvation. Also, they consider Prapati as an act of winning grace. The Tilak mark of the Vadakalai men is a symbolic representation of Vishnu's right foot. Since Vishnu's right foot is believed to be the origin of the river Ganga, the Vadakalai contend that his right foot should be held in special veneration, and its sign impressed on the forehead. They also apply a central mark to symbolize the goddess Lakshmi Vishnu's wife, along with the Thiruman The Urdva Pundra which is vertical and faces upwards denotes that it helps one in reaching Vaikuntha the spiritual abode of Lord Vishnu, and is also considered to be a protection from evil. Vadakalai women apply a red central mark only, symbolizing Lakshmi, on their foreheads. Guru Parampara 
The Vadakalai sect traces its lineage back to Thurakarahi Piran Pillan, Kadambi Akan, and other direct disciples of Ramanuja, and considers Vedanta Desika to be the greatest acharya of the post Ramanuja era. The Vadakalai community consists of the following groups, based on the sampradaya followed. Pancharatra – followers of Srimad Azagya Singar of Ahobila Mutt. The majority of Vadakale belongs to this group. His disciples established Mutts at different places in North India, including Varanasi, Chitrakut and Pushkar. Descendants – Narasimacharya established a temple of Dwarkadish in Varanasi on the spot where Lord Krishna slew the tyrannical ruler of Poundradesh with his Sudarshan Chakra, Acharya Swami Madhavacharya Ji, who defeated the founder of Arya Samaj Dayananda Saraswati in a theological debate. Hariramacharya established Jalariya Mutt in Rajasthan Ramdas Ramanujdas Achari, a disciple of Swami Balmukandacharya of Jalariya, founded the Jagannath Mandir at Strand Road, Kolkatamunatreya, followers of Srimad Andavan of Andavan Ashramams, and Swayamacharyas. The Sarangam Srimad Andavan Ashramam, Poundarakapuram Andavan Ashramam, and most of the present-day Vidagalai families are directly connected to this Acharya Parampara, and follow the worship and ritual patterns outlined by Sri Gopalarya Mahadesakan, Pariya Andavan Sri Srinivasa Mahadesakan, Parakala, they are mostly followers Brahmatantra Swatantra Gr of Parakala Mutt, Mysore. Founded in 1399 by Brahmatantra Parakala Gr, the Pitadipathis of this mutt are the preceptors of the royal family of Mysore Kingdom, Wadayars. This has stayed as a royal mutt of the kings since then, and is a mutt for all Iyengars under this category. Other lineages include Srimad Sakshat Swami, Srimad Vedanta Ramanuja Mahadeshika Swami, wrote the 24,000 Paddy, elaborate commentary on Tiru Ariyurapaddy, Srimad Thirukadandai Gopalarya Mahadesakanatara Saraswadani, Swami Desika Sahasra Namam, Srimad Srinivasa Mahadesakan Sayanam, Srimad Sri Ranganatha Mahadesakan Vathirayurapu, and Srimad Vedanta Ramanuja Mahadesakan Vazutharth Munitreya Sampradaya of the Vadakalai sect, which belongs to the Rahasyatreya Parampara of Pranatharthaharan, who was also known as Kadambi Akan. Their Sri Bhashya and Bhagavadvashaya Parampara is the same as that of the rest of the Vadakalai. Swami Janardanacharya, a successor of Swami Gopalacharya, was the guru of Devraha Baba. The Sugrav Kila temple at Ayodhya belongs to this guru parampara. <laughs> Demographics Traditionally, places of high importance with significant Vadakalai populations included Kanchipuram, Kumbakonam, Tiruvallur, Mysore and Kurnool district. However, today much of the people have moved to the big cities. In Vrindavan, the Jankivalab Mandir of Keshahat is a prominent Vadakalai Sri Vaishnava monastic institution and is associated with the spiritual lineage of the Ahobila Mutt. The present Azagiya Singar has visited this well-known institution in the past as well as recently. It is presently headed by Swami Sri Anurudhakaryaji Maharaj. In Rajasthan the Jalariya Mutt is one of the most prominent Mutts and its branches have spread over to the neighbouring regions of Gujarat and Maharashtra. Sri Swami Balmukandakaryaji was a distinguished scholar and renowned Acharya of this Mutt. <laughs> Notable Vadakalai people Gopala Bhatta Goswami (1503–1578), born of Vadakalai Iyengar, one of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan in Chaitanya Vaishnavism, and a highly revered guru in Iskan. Chakravarti Rajagopalachari (1878–1972), Indian politician and activist of the Indian independence movement. Premier of Madras 1937 to 1939, Governor of Bengal 1946 to 1948, Governor General of India 1948 to 1950, Union Home Minister 1950 to 1952 and Chief Minister of Madras State 1952 to 1954. Founder of Swatantra Party. C. V. Rungacharlu 1831 to 1883, Dewan of Mysore Kingdom from 1881 to 1883. T. S. S. Rajan 1880 Indian politician and freedom fighter. 
Member of the Imperial Legislative Council 1934 Minister of Public Health and Religious Endowments Madras Presidency 1937 Minister of Food and Public Health Madras Presidency 1946 Tirumalai Krishnamacharya an influential yoga teacher, healer and scholar. Agnihotram Ramanuja Tattacharya (1907–2008), renowned Vedic scholar and recipient of two national awards for his contribution to Vedic studies and Sanskrit literature. R. Madhavan, B. 1970, Indian film actor. Topic. See also. Ramanujacharya. Visistadvaita. Vaishnavism. Alvars Iyengar Topic Notes Topic References Topic Bibliography Topic Further reading Dictionary of Hindu Lore and Legend ISBN 0 1 by Anna Dalapikula The Vernacular Veda, Revelation, Recitation, and Ritual Univ of South Carolina Press, Columbia, South Carolina, USA 1 January 1994, by Vasudha Narayanan Understanding Hinduism, ISBN 1844832015, by Vasudha Narayanan Topic. External links Introduction to Sri Vaishnava Philosophy srivaishnavam.com Good website on general info www.anudanam.org Sri Vaishnava News and Learning Portal www.antaryami.net Sri Vaishnava News Network http colon slash slash guru .com, exhaustive complete details srivaishnava guru paramparai http colon slash slash .com, exhaustive articles archives for the esoteric principles of srivaishnavam nathamuni alavander.org dedicated to shriman nathamungal and shri alavander vadakalai versus thankalai tamil brahmins General information Site for Sri Vaishnava prayers HTTP colon slash slash www.ramanajamission.org slash HTTP colon slash slash vanamamalai.us slash closing parenthesis HTTP colon slash slash www.chinagiar.org slash main slash content slash HTTP colon slash slash www.andalgr.org http colon slash slash www.midramangalamgr.org slash index html http colon slash slash www.sridharacharyaji.com slash about swamiji.php http colon slash slash www.sansthanam.com slash http colon slash slash www.shrishridardam.com slash http colon slash slash www.ahabilamit.org slash http colon slash slash www.parakalamatham.org slash http colon slash slash andavan.org slash http colon slash slash acharyamandir.com slash http colon slash slash www.shrivatsa.com slash home HTML <laughs>